This WBTV High Definition program is sponsored by Time Warner Cable. WBTV News at 11 starts right now. Demetrius Montgomery guilty as charged. And tonight, the parents of two murdered CMPD officers Reason. are breaking Reason. their three and a half year silence. If this was a ball game, we won. Like I told the judge when I got up and spoke, you know, I hope God will forgive him, because I never will. He took my son. The Clarks and Shelton's lives have not been the same since their sons were killed in the line of duty, April 1st, 2007. Tonight you'll hear their story only on WBTV News. Hello, welcome everyone. I'm Paul Cameron. And I'm Molly Grantham. Three and a half years is a lifetime to wait for justice. A lifetime to wait for the man who killed their children to face justice. Every day since that horrible night in 2007, the parents of Sean Clark and Jeff Shelton have waited for today. A night when they can finally exhale knowing their sons can rest in peace. I know what I wanted that was dropped first shot out of the barrel. Death penalty. Yep. But what we have got now, I can live with. I don't have to like it, but I can live with it. So this this part of the recovery process. Are you happy with the results? Yes. And no. It's yes and no for Bob Clark, Sean Clark's dad, because he says it's the best they could have received, and so he'll take it. He and Jeff Shelton's father, John Shelton, feel the same way. It's just been a living hell. You know, we rode a roller coaster of highs and lows, and more lows than highs. I mean, every time we just about feel like we're going to see some po something positive happen, we get our feet knocked out from under us. John has never before spoken publicly. He's waited three and a half years to talk about this case. We'll never have our sons back. Uh, we have their memory, and we can't control when they come and leave this world, but I sure didn't plan on me burying him. I planned on him burying me, but it was a joy to have him. These men and Sean's mother and siblings admit they are still in shock. It's over. They can't believe, they say, their living hell is over. Like I told the judge when I got up and spoke, you know, I hope God will forgive him because I never will. He took my son for no reason. He took Bob and Alona's son for no reason. And it's, it's unacceptable. We spoke 30 minutes after sentencing was decided. Those strangers on March 31st, 2007, these families have become friends ever since, often bonding over the curveballs which blindsided them in every direction. What was the part that came out the most that um, not surprised you, because that's the defense, but that was making you think, uh-oh, this might not go our way? What was the thing that came out that made you think that's a really good point for the defense? Fant. Detective CMPD Arvin Fant, who has since been demoted to patrol, had sloppy notes. It came out the day before the trial was to begin. And it cost us the death penalty. First day in court, boom, it was gone. At that point, the, the, the light went out of the candle, I can put, tell you that. It was hard going for a long time. And that was the worst part of the three and a half years. Don't misunderstand their frustrations <coughs> about the past. Thursday night, these parents are thrilled. There are even some laughs in the 90 minutes of interview. They both say overall the Mecklenburg County's District Attorney's Office came through. And both agree the defense attorney was great despite them hating what he said. It's so interesting, both you and Bob Clark think the defense did an exceptional job. If I was in trouble, He'd be the first person I'd call to get me out of it. Alona Clark says after the verdict, Demetrius Montgomery's father came over to her. She gave him a hug. She talked with him very directly. And I hope someday that his son could apologize or tell us why he did it face to face. And he said he'd work on that. Both families say Demetrius never showed remorse, often locked eyes with them in court, sometimes snickering at them when he walked by and they could do nothing. But, Bob says, oh well. But now I don't have to worry about that. 
he cannot talk and stare to somebody else. Hmm. Wow. That was some of the stuff right there where he said, you know what, he made us so insane inside that courtroom. He'd mm -hmm. be snickering at us. He'd crack jokes at us almost with his eyes. But now he can do that in prison. He is locked away. Yes. And, uh, you know, Molly, I don't think people realize how hard you worked to get these people to talk. I mean, I, I heard your phone calls. It was... Uh, terrific solid journalism on your part well the families really wanted to talk but they couldn't for a very very long time and it was it was very emotional to be there with them today and I'm glad they finally broke their silence WBTV Sharon Smith covered the entire six-week Montgomery trial let's bring her into the set right now Sharon uh, you saw the families in court every day what's your reaction after hearing what Molly just put on the air uh, so much of that we saw in court um, mm -hmm. what mr. Shelton said he also said in court and he said it with such power and conviction today he did not tear up. He's a military man, but everything he said that you heard some of that in Molly's story, he was pointing at Montgomery, mm -hmm. saying he would never forgive him that God may. Uh, just, uh, you see the roller coaster these families have been through. Some days in court were a little easier than others, but a lot of them were really hard, and I'd say tears were shed just about every day. As far as evidence, no smoking gun per se, but uh, a lot of witnesses came forward and said they saw someone who looked like Demetrius Montgomery. They did, and that, that evidence, those, those witnesses were really key there. But uh, some of the big evidence you're talking about, you've got DNA, you've got gunshot residue, you've got fingerprints, but none of those were slam dunks. The gun had three people's DNA, Officer Shelton's, an unknown person, and then it was a highly likely match that it was Montgomery's. I believe it was one in 2.6 million chance that it couldn't be his. And then the gunshot residue, the SBI did that test. There mm -hmm. was question about that. The defense threw all these data daggers at it and then no fingerprints on the gun. Mm. There were some fingerprints on a box of empty bullets that matched the gun, yeah. but no fingerprints on the gun, no DNA on the trigger. Yeah. That was tough. Couldn't that DNA. Have, yeah, I'm sorry, couldn't, no, no. Have, couldn't have fingerprints on the gun because it was rusty. No that way. DNA and the ballistics, that was they were compelling, but it was really some of those witnesses and some of those people that live in Timber Ridge that ended up sealing this case. Yeah, someone who worked on the case told me that this case will be won or lost based on those Timber Ridge neighbors. They will make it or break it, all depending on if the jury believed them and we know that they did believe them almost 20 of those neighbors testified and they all gave this same description light-skinned male white t-shirt uh, twisties in his hair some of them had slight little inconsistencies but a lot of that the prosecutor mm -hmm. said you know what if they all got it exactly right then we might be suspect then we might think they all got together and shared their stories but they didn't and I tell you Montgomery was caught within 30 minutes of that call going out over mm -hmm. CMPD that officers were down. He was caught within that perimeter. No other suspect was. Yeah. No other gun was found. And they had a wide perimeter that night. Sharon oh, they Smith, did. You, you did a great job. You and Steve Crump together. Did, really great job in court. Let's talk Timber Ridge Apartments. That's where WBTV's Tom Rousey is live tonight. Tom, kind of a disconnect between the eyewitnesses who testified and the folks who are talking to you tonight. Yeah, definitely some mixed reactions in this neighborhood. Where I'm standing is building 7211 here at Timber Ridge, and it was a call from inside this building, an unrelated disturbance call that the officers responded to that night. They actually left because they had to go to another call, and when they came back, it was near this very spot where I'm standing, where they were shot, and you can see the memorial to the two officers right over there. But even though it's been all this time, and despite all the evidence you heard and today's convictions, there's still a lot of debate in this neighborhood as to whether Montgomery really was the killer. I don't think justice uh, took its place today. I just don't feel like it did. The evidence was enough for the jury, but many folks living at the Timber Ridge Apartments still believe there's someone else out there who really killed Officers Clark and Shelton. I really feel like they just had to make somebody take their time. Two officers got killed. Somebody had to take the time. Many here question the lack of witnesses at the trial. One person did testify they saw a man struggling with the officers, but couldn't say it was Montgomery, while others testified they saw Montgomery running away. But no one could say for sure they saw Montgomery shoot the officers. There's people that's out here every day all night, so... How can you not find somebody that's going to say that he's that they saw him shooting the cops? But there are folks here who believe Montgomery is guilty. However, many won't talk on camera over three years after the murders here. I don't know. I don't want to talk. Many folks are still scared to talk about the case. As for Brenda McNair, she followed the trial and said some things made her think Montgomery was innocent, but others, like his refusal to talk, made her think guilty. If it's truly, truthfully that he honestly did commit those murders, then he got what he deserved. 
Now, a lot of folks in this neighborhood are quick to point out that Montgomery never lived here at Timber Ridge. He was visiting a relative that night, so a lot of folks really feel like their neighborhood got a very bad name. And although it's had its troubles in the past, they feel like it didn't deserve this bad a name since the guy now convicted of killing the two officers did not even live here. Live tonight in Northeast Charlotte at Timber Ridge Apartments, I'm Tom Rousey, WBTV on your side. All right, Tom, thank you. Now, a lot of folks out there are talking about this trial on our website. You can log on to WBTV.com for a complete wrap up of today's dramatic guilty verdict. Plus, we have more with the interviews that Molly did with the families all on WBTV.com. Well, tonight, Paul, people along the North Carolina coast are feeling the effects of a powerful tropical storm. Some spots got almost two feet of rain. That's as much as a hurricane can bring. Now take a look at live power Doppler radar. Some new showers developing across the Charlotte area tonight. Chief Meteorologist Eric Thomas is live in the First Alert Weather Center. Hair. All right, Molly, good to see you this evening. And I'm so happy to report that finally now that area is beginning to let up a little bit in terms of the rain out to the east. What are we doing here around the Piedmont of North and South Carolina? Well, the upper level low, yes, we talked about it, said yesterday that there was still a chance we could get a few parting showers around here during the day and evening hours. And there we go. Things getting a little bit interesting right now around Mecklenburg County up toward Lake Norman. In Huntersville. You get the idea. Lowesville in here, Westport Highway 16 through this area. Some moderate rain. So, with that said, we'll let you know how much more rain we're expecting overnight. Can you believe I'm talking about that? And the rest of your first alert forecast as we take you into the weekend. Eric, thank you. Coming up, a mystery on the lake. Two men vanished near Charlotte. The only clue a boat with no one on board. Plus, he's charged with murder but claims the police chief's daughter died of an overdose. We'll show you what search warrants are revealing tonight about the case of Valerie Hamilton. But coming up next at 11 o'clock. I just lost my mom just 10 minutes ago. Some people say the Lord works in mysterious ways. For believers, tonight's past three on may be proof. WBTV's Brigitte Mack with a story you have to see. It's next. Friday on WBTV News this morning. Are you living in the digital dark age? Well, we're going to help you see the light with a summit that's getting people connected to technology and its benefits. Plus, traffic reporter Liz Horton gives us a tour of the new art and exhibits at the Mint Museum. We're on your side with the news, weather, and traffic you need to start your day each weekday morning at 5 a.m. We'll see you Friday. Two police officers murdered. Now, the verdict is in. Guilty. Guilty first-degree murder. And WBTV reported it first. Live reports every day from the trial. On the web. Reporting on justice at work. WBTV on your side. The forecast to plan your day. WBTV first alert weather. Hey, you're one of those new Sonatas. Yes, I am. What's all this buzz about you and choose wisely? Well, when people choose me, the all-new Sonata, versus you, the Camry, they choose more safety features, a longer warranty, better MPG. Okay, okay, I get it. And I cost thousands less. Drive the all-new 2011 Sonata for $199 a month. That's $199 a month. Choose wisely.